should have said yes. It's much simpler that way. It would have been much simpler. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show Gay, a podcast which is called Gay, where the hosts are gay, but the topic doesn't have to be. My name is Simon, and with me I'm joined by... Austin. Cole. And uh, this is the second official episode that we've done. Hopefully. Um, yeah, hopefully. Uh, I don't think anything's going to go wrong this time. Oh, wow. Wow. Best foot forward. You know, what could yeah. go wrong with that? you got to be optimistic. There's no... Well, this is... Well, it's cheap. And... <laughs> We're using a, a TV tray for our microphone stand. And the wood that I knocked on. Yeah, so that's going to be loud. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Um... We're probably only going to do this podcast, like, monthly, now that I think about it, just because uh, school's starting up, and it's just going to be really busy. It's, I've gotten myself very busy this semester. I've got, like, seven or eight different obligations. Uh, ah, well, I envy that. <laughs> I have zero. Um, I suppose I should be, like, mowing the lawn and feeding my fish and, yeah, you know, taking care of those orphans that I adopted, but I... <laughs> Well, I just don't. I have zero obligations, it feels like, and everyone else is starting school and starting jobs and, mm-hmm. you know, getting married and still single. And... Well, are we all? Are you single? No, I'm like... Oh, shit. Committed relationship <laughs> for Committed years. Relationship. I love that. Streaks of over 365 days on Snapchat. Uh, That's amazing. Uh, Unless you broke it. 620. Good. 620 days. Six wow. Ha- there was... Uh, <laughs> that ain't We love. were about to lose it, and I... You flew was, to Canada. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> you calling her you were like okay w- is this nothing to you what does this mean <laughs> anything okay anyway so anyway um that i was gonna love. say something about obligations i forgot already. oh what are you doing like just list them um okay so well the school obviously yeah. um there's this channel that we've been trying to i'm I, every now and then i try to like make a video that's not just the podcast and then i end up horribly failing and then i get so discouraged and I go to sleep. Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8. <laughs> Speed run. Yeah. Um, so the, the, there's the channel. Um, there's Pike, uh, where I'm house manager, so I have obligations for that. And I'm planning a work day, which is where we just work on the house for an entire Saturday. And then I have uh, the Rooster Teeth Nebraska Community Group, um, and that's getting to swing. I'm starting a club on the UNO campus uh, to watch movies and just talk about them and stuff. Um, and then, uh, there's a charity event, uh, called Extra Life that we're going to do in November. Um, and I'm planning that right now. And then I'm looking for a job. <laughs> oh, that last one. You really think, it, well, you need money first. I, I, I for think. a lot of these things, I need money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, I, I guess that is the reason why you're looking for a well, job. Well, I'm kind of mad because right now my financial aid hasn't come through yet. That'd be infuriating. And yeah, I was going to use that to pay for Everything. bills in the coming month of September, which is in like five days. Uh, oh, so no. how will on Monday if I still don't have it I'm gonna go into the office and be like what's going on where's my money where's my money right <laughs> yeah don't forget the shotgun they love that yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially on the school campus yeah, go buy the shotgun though that's the other thing with with financial aid oh yeah right that, that's the kicker um yeah. okay well yeah no I mean that's really good so why why the club like what kind of movies do you want to watch oh well. Part of uh, Pike is that uh, we're trying to get 100% campus involvement with like, our members. Everybody's involved in a oh, club okay. outside gotcha. of Pike. Mm-hmm. Um, and you couldn't stand any well, club I that was, existed. <laughs> well, that. And um, I was in UNO TV. Uh, mm. That counted just because it was on school yep. and it was in Pike. Um, but that got disbanded, obviously. And I I was looking at the gateway and thinking about doing like an article every issue. Remind me, is that the... That's uh, the school paper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which they've had, like, credibility issues with, like, typos on the front page. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Jacques. Jacques. Um. Who read it? Check. I don't know. That's the real question. I don't know know anybody on the gateway, so. I was, there was actually, like, a meet and greet today at 2.30, but. Dude, I learned, I learned my cages with that paper. Like, that's all I do. I don't read it. Yeah. Um. (laughs) Uh, and then, I don't know, there wasn't any sort of, like, movie club at all. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I like to do, just watch movies and talk about them. And so. there is no, like, film major on campus, right? Not really. Okay. Uh, the closest thing you got is, like, creative media, which is what I'm in. What kind of um, movies do you want to focus on? I mean, obviously, like... Um, just, like, movies that uh, are easy to talk about in a group, like, that could cause discussion type movies. But so, like, not super mainstream, but, like, no, but not super obscure. Yeah, not super obscure, not, like, art house. Uh, yeah. Donnie Darko. Not, well, Donnie Darko is pretty popular. Yeah, that's true. Um, 
But stuff stuff like that, where yeah. it's popular, but it's also really intelligent okay. and easy to talk about. Okay. Right. Like Baby Driver. Like Baby Driver. I was talking to someone very recently, and I was just trying to like hit them up and try to be a good Samaritan, good friend, make people, you know, make connections. And I was like, have you seen Baby Driver? Because it's, you know, relatively popular. People saw it. And the response was just, yeah, it, it was all right. <laughs> and I just exited out, and I blocked them on everything. Yeah, yeah blocked <laughs> like, and reported. Absolutely. I mean, if you could... Found language. If you could sit your ass down and actually watch that movie because the movie's long that's the thing too you can watch that movie from start to finish and just be like that was all right period like what kind of person are you what kind of person what kind of life do you lead right i just feel like you must have just like you must be like a cave vacant and full of bats (laughs) right like absolutely (laughs) period that's my period like (laughs) i uh oh obviously the baby driver starts it you know it's a cycle i watch it every you know 28 days 20 days. 28 days kind of running earlier. Calendar. That's why my alarm sets, because I have to watch it. Oh, you yeah. do? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's what, that's what <laughs> I would do. No, because I had that alarm set at 3, because that was for, like, yesterday when mm-hmm. I had to wake up, but it's like... It's like a Krabby Patty at 3 a.m. Oh, Go boy, boy 3 a.m. Oh, Baby Driver. Baby Driver. <laughs> it's just so good. It's so good. Like, if it doesn't win stuff at the Oscars, I'm going to be mad. It has to be at some award show. Like, yeah. it's just, it's critically, it's so, it's a, it's a juggernaut. It is. Everything about it is so good. The production, have, music, everything. Have you guys heard or seen the movie Silence? It's, it's with, uh, with, Mar- with uh, Scorsese directed yes, it, right? Yes. It's got, um, Andrew Ad- Garfield in it. And Adam Driver. Yeah. And Liam Neeson. And Liam Neeson, yeah. And it was like, there's only one nomination for it last year. Yeah, it got swept under the rug kind of like I didn't see any advertising for it so they didn't have much to have had like a good advertising budget um but like I did eventually see it after the Oscars and I was just like oh my god yeah why didn't this get more attention I remember seeing the get out trailer and I was like wow that's intense and then I saw the silence trailer like underneath that I was like well I might as well give that because I love Martin Scorsese Mm -hmm. and I just saw Goodfellas for the first time right before that and I was like Mm -hmm. well this has to be good yeah is get out on this cycle or did it Okay. Yeah, it'll be on the cycle. Do you think that's going to get Oscar? Year. Um, it might get a nod. Um, it might get some. Well, I don't know. Like cinematography. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Remind me though, with Oscars, it's not even just what like a movie could be phenomenal, but unless it fits certain categories or certain like check a checkbox, yes. it doesn't. And not even like about the movie, yeah, but like how they produced it. Right? Yeah. Is that true? Um, probably behind the scenes. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. Um, I just. Well, first of all, the director has to submit the movie. Yeah. Like, they don't just review every movie because there's two Obviously, movies yeah. that, that come out. Um, so, like, if... Uh, and they might not even watch what's it. What's the anyway. guy's name? Keegan? Michael Key? Yeah. Or yeah, Michael Peel. Key. Pe- uh, Jordan Peele. Jordan oh, Peele. Jordan Peele. Yeah, Jordan Peele. I like Michael Key, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if he just doesn't uh, submit it to the Oscars, then it's not going to get any nominations, oh, which okay. is what happened with um, this movie that came out in Korea last year called The Handmaiden. Oh. Probably the best uh, foreign language movie that came out last year, but it didn't get nominated for Oscars because they just didn't submit, they just didn't submit it. I have a question about this. So my opinion of like the Academy, like honestly, Academy, if I need you later on, don't re- <laughs> listen to this. But um, the Academy, it doesn't seem like they're really in it to win it when it comes to film as an art. It seems like uh, it seems like they really do kind of take it as a job. But they have really weird, you know, opinions about it. Like, so, I mean, this is something that matters to me, of course. They don't watch the animated films. They don't give a crap about the animated <laughs> category. But a lot of these animated movies are very good. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, of course, Anomalisa was phenomenal. And outside of it, it's just the medium was animated. Yeah. Um, and they would have loved it otherwise. But with these foreign films, do you think it's the same thing? Where, like, it, it, there's no way it could be a viable candidate just because these people will not give it the time of day. Yeah. That's okay. definitely yeah, because true. they should have a, a completely like whole different mm-hmm. show. Because like right. they're just there to see like the best movie, best actor. Unless a best foreign actress. film has like a cult following, um, it usually uh, like in the Academy probably won't give it much thought uh, if watch it at all. Yeah. Um, that's why like uh, I think um, what was the movie? It, it won Son of Saul. It won I think two years ago. Okay. Uh, I I think it got a lot of recognition because of all the people that were like super yeah, hey watch this movie watch this movie yes. about it um but other movies uh i don't know i don't i don't watch a lot of foreign films myself that's the other thing is that it's kind of a cycle where like it's not i don't listen to the academy directly but it's a trickle down thing where 
if end up, if they're not watching it, if it's not culturally relevant and put in my face, I wouldn't see it. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I don't like foreign films. I love foreign crap, period. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. I just... Yeah, and they gave it a whole different light to it, too, as well. Because, like, two years ago, they did, like, the segment on the documentaries or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, they had Louis C.K., like come out and announce it yeah. and it's like he, that's probably like one of the last people you want to do it because he literally just kind of made fun of it and then yeah. he he opens up the card and it's like and it's mad max i was just kidding like because mad max did win a lot of them, yeah right? yeah yeah so i would still like i mean obviously i get as a comedian what he's doing but i'd still be so pissed what little recognition as a right. as a documentarian you would get like mm-hmm. just an insult yeah and plus the last two years of the academy have been kind of i want to say I shouldn't say weird, but it's been definitely different compared to the last, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, um, the movie that wins Best Director ends up being the one winning Best Picture just because the you know, so director's related. got the most influence over the picture. That They usually go hand in hand. But, yeah, the past couple of years, it's been totally different. Like, uh, the year where I think Mad Max was nominated. But it was Spotlight. Spotlight. That won. Yeah, Spotlight it... won. Nobody saw that movie. Everybody was really confused. No. But I ended up seeing it uh like the day before uh, the oscars that year and i definitely get why it won it was very it had a huge political message that went with it and i think yeah. that's where they're taking best picture now is what mm-hmm. is most culturally relevant that year right because then moonlight won it the next year exactly yeah because also the year before uh there was that was the whole thing with like the no uh black actors and then straight out compton was nominated and then they had chris rock host the oscars right yeah yeah and then the next they had moonlight win it and that's where I also felt like, well, Moonlight's a very good movie. I would say that. Um, but I also did see La La Land. And La La Land was definitely, I thought, better I than agree. Moonlight. But yeah. also, I would say what was better than Moonlight was uh, was the movie with Jeff Bridges and Chris Pine. Uh, Hell or High Water? Yes. Yeah. And I would say that was even probably better than that. Just because, mm-hmm. like, that was just a deep, loud movie. Yeah, so. yeah. I did feel La La Land was... I don't. I don't want to use the word overhype because I doesn't really sell it. But like, it. I, I. Best picture is a really interesting thing to put onto it, just because, especially with the category of, um, you know, how relevant is it to culture and everything. Like, it really is just sort of a, you know, it's a good repeat of tropes that we've seen before, and it's a good heartfelt film of that kind of celebration. But it's not. It's not anything super profound in it, mm-hmm. you know. Where like again, like Moonlight just kind of tackles an issue, and so I can I can understand choosing that over that. But, you know, the other movies, like you mentioned, like, you know, is this really the category of profound movies we want yeah, to have? I, I think uh, what Cole is saying that is that, like, five years ago, Hell or High Water or, like, La La Land would definitely beat out Moonlight. But they're mm. sort of changing the category right. this past couple of years. And that's why Moonlight ended the first, up. The first Muslim uh, sub- uh, lead actor? Yeah, the, the first uh, uh, Islamic Allah. actor yes. to win uh, a Best Supporting Actor role, he won mm. for Moonlight uh, this past year. It was... Yeah. Uh, Marshala Ali, Ali, I think is yeah. what his name is. Um, yeah, and he's been in a bunch of movies. Uh, he's an American actor, um, but it's, it was nice Blue to see him win. Yeah, I don't know. I, I love. I mean, also because with the La La Land, like it's kind of hard too as well. Because like a lot of the other movies, I didn't think. Because Hell or High Water, I definitely shot, thought it should have been up there. But like a lot of the other movies, I don't know if they could have really competed with La La Land either. Because I, mm. I saw The Arrival. That was. It was okay. Like it, it, it won sound design or whatever that category is yeah. called, uh, sound editing, I think. Um, and I definitely agree with that. It had like oh, some yeah. amazing, yeah. Uh, produced, amazingly produced sounds in it. Um, but like I see what you're saying, right? Uh, and then it's just not what, um, the same tier. I mean, but well, also Hacksaw Ridge. Mm. That movie was amazing, but then it also gets discredited because it was directed by Mel Gibson, and Mel Gibson has poor history with the Academy. Mm-hmm. It's true. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the only reason why, because it got rated like an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lie, like, knowing what I what I, know, what I do know about Hacksaw Ridge, I would be surprised that that wouldn't itself yeah. get the picture forward, I maybe mean, not the director, but uh-huh. you know, like... And I, because like, also this is personal bias too, just because if you guys ever heard or seen the movie Fury with Brad Pitt uh, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I heard about that movie. I heard it was bad. Um, <laughs> yes. It, it kind of, uh, I don't know. I personally loved it just because okay. of the casting and yeah. the message behind it. it was, it's not really a big message behind it, but it's like, it's uh, story driven, I guess. It's gotcha. not moral. Um, mm-hmm. more than that. So, um, I don't know. I love the casting behind it. Shia LaBeouf in it. It's like, automatically wins my heart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that movie more than Hacksaw Ridge. But I don't say that it's a better movie. 
Just because Hacksaw Ridge was it was so well done. So they were on the same block though. I would say so. Okay. But, That's but I mean, mine. like during the cycle, they were on the same cycle. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, actually, no, they weren't. I, I don't think so because I think Fury was year before. Okay. And okay. Then Hacksaw Ridge. I want to. Okay, so I want to talk about the Moonlight you know, significant, uh, thing, because obviously, like, the idea is black, gay, right, We're, you know, as two concepts, that's, I mean, no offense to the Academy, I suppose, but I, I assume that that's what they would look at as far as how this relevant, but that movie reminded me a lot of, like, the movie Precious, where a lot of the kind of ideas and certain, like, setups are very, like, relevant, of course, but it, it's such a specific plot, it's such a contrived situation, and it doesn't mean it's a bad movie, but it's just not a universal exploration of the problems that people face. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of how it's presented. Because, like, it's not that I don't think people feel the way that the characters do in Moonlight, but this is not everybody. This is not a typical experience that yeah. gay people face or that black people face, but it is a very hard, you know, compelling story. I definitely thought the way that the the main actor in Moonlight uh, portrayed his character was super unrelatable. Like, okay. he just seemed like a shell like he like when he's he, an adult like, like well all through his life like he barely spoke um right. which i think was on purpose uh so that's just like a difference between me and the director's vision um but he also he just barely emoted like, oh, okay. ever uh and i just thought it was just like yeah, I, he's just the stand-in character for all gay people to be and i don't mm. like that because i also i think with that too is because he was bullied a lot during that movie because i mean if you saw like he got chased around and stuff and mm-hmm. then I'm not sure how Lee comes comes in yeah. and tells him like, "Yo, you gotta like choose what your life's gonna be," and then once he gets to be older, he starts to come like he starts to love mode a little bit more. Yeah. But then, uh, when he gets punched or whatever in high school, then that's where he, he like shuts down again, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then once he turns into adult, he's completely different. Mm-hmm. So like, based on how society treats him, is how it morphs him, right? So, yeah. I guess that was the more I got out of it, but I don't. Certainly a choice. I, again, like I, I, I would still lean towards this where it, it bores more to a contrived situation that still could be compelling as a story, but it's it's it kind of feels like a stand-in. It kind of feels like a blank kind of slate yeah. to some degree, which I think to its credit kind of worked for how a lot of people interpreted it. But I don't know if if that was artistically the best choice. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but just I, I just see this sort of trend where like you have these really like compelling dramas where things are super high octane, super like, oh jeez, like I cannot believe this is happening to this person. And again, like it's compelling, but is it cheap, you know, to right. some degree because right. of yeah. that. Especially when you get to the degree of saying this is best picture, this is and I mean I don't it's I'm not saying anything, you know, hard statements about Moonlight as a picture, but just just as a trend, if that's if that's something to consider. But yeah. What grinded the most gears, I think, during that year was like uh what was it, the best costume? It was Suicide mm. Squad or Star Trek? It was uh, Makeup. Best Makeup. Best Makeup. Okay. Yeah. And was it Star Trek? It was Star Trek against Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad won. won. And that, like, you can't, I mean, you see, you literally see him, it's like a before and after. It's like, well, I definitely go with the after one, right? I mean, this is, and like, definitely seeing Suicide Squad, it's like, was yeah, it, is like, it for Harley Quinn's makeup? Is that what Well, that probably more Croc. Uh, yeah, okay. the killer croc guy. Jared Leto's is that, and Jared Leto's Joker. Is that where they make fun of the crocodile in Rick and Morty? Is that what they're making fun of? I don't. Pro- uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. I think it's just <laughs> they're just making fun of Cam- yeah. Cam- yeah. probably like Cyclops. Oh, definitely okay. a lot more okay. crocodile uh, than bot. <laughs> both of you are hard and soulless. Wow. Um, um, that's upsetting. No. Like, yeah, they actually they like uh, when they won, they put like pictures side by side of like the killer croc's makeup, where it just looked like they like painted lines on like this fat guy. And it, it didn't look like a crocodile, and then they uh, had like a CGI. CGI yeah. One of like one of like the aliens from Star oh, Trek yeah. like, oh, next to yeah. each other, and it was so intricate, and it, it looked like yeah. it took literally like twenty four hours right. to do. And they were like, Su- "Suicide Squad is the one that won this." <laughs> it was so bad. So related related to this topic, not necessarily like Oscars though. How do you feel about modern use of like CGI versus like just kind of more intricate costume, just intricate creative use of makeup? Um. I mean, with, I think, I think the 80s and 90s prove that, uh, uh, practical effects will always look and feel nicer, uh, in a movie than CGI, uh, and that's until the point where CGI gets, like, 100% unnoticeable, which I don't think it quite is yet, it's very unnoticeable a lot of the time, but right. they're still, you're like, oh, this, this doesn't look quite right, right. uh, Uncanny Valley type stuff. Certainly. Yeah. Um, and that's where practical effects, like makeup, uh and like actual costumes costumes and stuff really shine 
um, when the, when the work is put into them. So uh, I lean to like enjoying more of that type of stuff, like using actual makeup rather than CGI. But I can understand why uh, the big Hollywood and big businesses don't want to do that because yeah. it's not really like because a... with Rogue One we were talking about it today with the whole CG like they CGI a, like a character completely and like like you said they're still working out the quirks of it right like they're still a little and I definitely noticed that like the lighting is a little bit different right mm-hmm. and so like I say if you have the technology go ahead and use it right but like practical use of just straight up acting yeah there's something about it where like I mean in certain things it makes more sense so, like you know something that's high pace you have something that moves really quickly and you want it to move you know not you want to notice that it's makeup it's like superhero movies it would make more sense to do CGI because the makeup would be hard to you know make it move and not look like a costume yeah um but like obviously I think in horror it gets used way too much CGI yeah like it's just not scary it's so mm-hmm. obviously yeah. a hologram and there's something about it can be shitty and still be so scary. Yeah. And it can just be so visceral. It's all about so the fear of the unknown. That's what I think right. horror genres need to more thrive off of. Yeah, right and there. I mean, also, too, because, like, horror films don't get enough credit for a lot of the things that they do because, like, if you see it, horror films are, like, rated so much lower cause, just because of the budget and it's just not as, like, well-produced. They're not mm-hmm. written very well. Okay. No star actors. That That's also weird and I don't like that, but yeah. that's true. Pin in that, because, like, re- related... So, remember that movie, Zombievers? Yeah. <laughs> so, that movie, obviously, overall kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> but it w- it didn't suck in the way that a lot of mo- horror movies do. Like, it was written pretty well. Like Zom- Wait, Zombievers? Zombievers. It was Zombie Beavers. Zombie Beavers. <laughs> like, the thing is, the dialogue, like, it, it just, it, it didn't take itself seriously, obviously. It was like a Sharknado. Kind oh, of. Okay. oh okay. totally. Okay, totally. And people were just, like, obviously having fun. And just, you can have such a low-budget, gutter-rat, trash movie... <laughs> But just if the dialogue's real, like who cares? Like I yeah. feel, I feel the problem that horror movies ha- don't do is that they don't make you. You're not invested in the characters, and obviously some people want to watch like Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven because they want to see the death scenes. Like I'm not right. gonna care about these random keep people. Yeah. But a really good horror movie, you gotta care. Con- Conjuring. I mean, that's because I'm not a big fan of horror movies, but I always say like The Conjuring was just a solid strip movie because yeah. they get into character death. I still haven't seen Conjuring mm. too. I'm I haven't seen the new Annabelle. I saw the first one. And you saw the first one? That I barely watched it because the whole time I was like... <laughs> I saw so. Annabelle at the beach. Is that the second one? <laughs> I no. imagine so. <laughs> I mean, the thing with, like... Unfortunately, I think that The Conjuring did have a pretty good, like, setup and structure, but then when they started getting into Annabelle, it became cheap. It became, like, here's a kind of... They've turned it into sort of like a franchise now. Right. Kind of like, like superhero yeah. movies are, where it's just like... There's a, each movie in the yep. series uh, sort of means something in this greater picture that they're trying to paint. And you think about it, it's like it's one of the few that like modern ones, right? Because mm-hmm. I mean, Friday the Thirteenth, that's practically dead. And Michael Myers, they keep trying to bring it back, but, but I agree. Yeah, it's dead, and it's more modern, right? It's like mm-hmm. a whole different thing. Like Insidious, kinda right, but yeah. At the same time, it's like everybody buckle up because we're gonna be dealing with a lot of monster movies uh, pretty soon. The Mummy came out. That is unfortunately oh, the first oh, of many. The Dooku. The Dark Universe Cinematic Universe. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Embarrassing. Um, I, don't, I, I don't even know if they're still... I mean, they... Did it I, flop? Tell me it flopped. So they maybe the Mummy they... flopped huge. Great. Like, like, entirely. And uh, I don't know if that's going to discourage them from continuing this idea that they had. Right. Um, but yeah, they, they were, the idea was like they were going to do The Mummy, uh, The Wolfman, yeah. Dracula... Um, Angelina Jolie was casted to play the Bride of Frankenstein in, like, a sequel of the Frankenstein movie they were going to make. Yeah, Frankenstein, uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Uh, okay. And so with The Mummy, this is the one with Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. the one with Tom Cruise oh, that my was God. supposed to start this the whole thing that they were going to do. It's so weird because, you know, The Mummy, what's that guy's name? Uh, Fraser, Brandon Fraser. Fraser. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's apparently technically part of that, like, not this universe expanded, but that's, like, it's supposed to be The Mummy. Like, that's yeah. Like, I didn't, I never realized that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's its strength is that it just seems so just, there's a mummy. That's kind of the plot and everything Mm -hmm. just seems very self-contained. It felt, it felt more like a adventuristic, like National Treasure 2 kind of uh, take on like just this Egyptian mummy atmosphere that right. that, that's, that's some surrounded that and there's a little bit of comedy with. but it's still pretty serious like yeah. it, and that's just i i don't think it's that hard but for some reason that i don't know it's through production and filters of this you know the script and directing but they just make such obviously bad choices yeah and, and like, that's a lot to do with like probably the producers decisions more that, well and if they hire a bad director they hire a bad director but, yeah. um 
uh, the producers have like a different vision in their head rather than the directors. The directors focused on this movie, and the producers are focused on yeah, what can the they full, get out of this movie? Picture, yeah, what right. uh, can this movie mean to other movies that they make? Right. Type thing, and so that's where usually where bad movies get made is that disconnect. I want to see more of these movies where like so compare the new mummy versus the not I'm gonna say the old mummy, but like Brendan Fraser mummy. Mm-hmm. Brendan Fraser mummy. If I critique it, I'm gonna see negative things that take away from the general positive whole. But if I critique the new mummy, I'm basically just taken out of trash bin. Like, it, there's not really any, like, structure to be like, this is a solid movie to mm-hmm. critique. Like, I, I can't even give it that satisfaction. Yeah. But there's so many of these movies that get made, and, like, I just... I mean, that's... I feel bad about saying this, but I... That's how I felt about Doctor Strange. That's how I felt about some of the, It's just... I felt like someone put it out, and now, like, what was I supposed to... What was I supposed to do with this? Mm-hmm. It wasn't a standalone movie. I don't... It wasn't enjoyable. Yeah, but I think with Marvel, too, they do is, like, it's building blocks, almost. Because, like... You know, because this is, they're building it up for Ragnarok. Like, yeah. Because Ragnarok's supposed to be huge. Like, this is, this the, is what they're the preparing for. that's coming out? Yeah. Yeah. And so, with that, it's like, it's kind of weird, too, because, like, they still haven't came out with the Black Widow movie, and the Avengers came out, what, in 2012? 2011? 12, I think, yeah. Yeah, 12. Yeah. And they've been planning that for a while, but now they just released the dates and stuff, and, like, it's been so long. They is there a Black Widow movie? They're planning on making one really yeah because i what i've heard from my friend is um no i mean don't at me at this right. but um what i heard is marvel is like a, a big or trust like in toys r us or like toy companies right yeah yeah they really care about toys right and so what they talk about is like well people aren't gonna buy a black widow character or action figure because it's like it's a woman like a woman lead so they canceled the movie on it and i'm like wow that that says something, but like it says a lot. <laughs> that says something. That like <laughs> like why would you cancel? Because like she's like one of the few predominantly women character or women leads. The first one in the Avengers, right? Yeah. yeah. And then they just had uh, Scarlet Witch. Yeah. And then they're gonna have uh, some other one, right? I, mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking I'm blanking. She was on pretty her. much the badass a woman character before Wonder Woman yes. in like this new series of movies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, like, so you're not going to sell toys on that because it's a woman? Like, what are right. those little girls that right. want to watch these movies? In fact, I think that would to... boom even more, right? Yeah, because right. it's, it's just an added market. It's not like you're going to lose all the market. The, all because... the marketing they did for Wonder Woman where they're, like, women only. Like, they just made it such a huge controversy for for a good reason because people are like, oh, it's, a, it's the first woman thing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what... that's. Are you kidding me? You make yeah. so much money. Are they planning on making it, like, a decade after? Or, like, her origin story will be her 10 years after she was in the Avengers. So she'll have to be, like, younger, but, like, be... Yeah. That's and then they still have to make a Hulk movie. Well, because the uh, original yeah. one, because Ed Norton, like... Hulk's one of those situations where... <laughs> I just don't know why they can't get it right. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> they've tried, like, two or three times, and... Right, they just exactly. Keep... It's like Spider-Man. They can't it's, do it right. It's just like Spider-Man. <laughs> but, I mean, I think... I mean, now they have they have it lined up yeah, correctly, yeah. so... Mark Ruffalo's oh. uh, in for the... The yeah, ride of his life. The ride of his oh, life. Yeah, the stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but did you guys hear that uh, Tony Stark or fuck, um, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, Tony, <laughs> Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Stark. <laughs> uh, he wants out. He doesn't want to be yeah. in the, mm-hmm. this, the movies anymore. And they're talking about how they're going to replace him and stuff. And like, like, keep getting his messages in bottles. Yes. <laughs> I think it'd be really funny if uh, they just totally replace him. Uh, the like, but, like he's in for Infinity Wars, like the one that's coming out next year. Is he in for the second part of that? I don't. He says. What I've heard is like he's wanted out since Age of Ultron. Yeah, and they be- they begged him to do every other movie past that, and mm-hmm. now he's like cutting the line. He's like, no, he'll probably die in the first one, and that'll be the climax. Because isn't that in the they... comics is like he's supposed to die? He, so. so then they'll probably kill him. Yeah, um, and that would be a good way because that's the other thing I hate about Marvel is they never kill anybody. Yeah. Like I really thought Civil War would have been so much more impactful if uh, the War Machine guy had died when he got like hit. Yeah. Because that would have made this whole battle that they're having, it really put it in perspective for the characters. Right. It would have been like, we're fighting over politics and we got one of our own guys killed. Yes. We should okay. bound right. together and fight yes. the actual yeah. bad guys. But then they just didn't do it and it was so aggravating. And they, they killed off, I mean, because they killed off Quicks, Quicksilver too, yeah. too soon, right? Because, yeah. Well, also, they didn't really have like the rights to him either. Cause he's, <laughs> that, isn't he like X-Men, technically? Um. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I was confused about that because there's a Quicksilver in one of the X Men origin movies, uh, and I was like, is this the same character? Am I supposed to? And I think they're doing like a little bit of a crossover with that, and then, like 
that's what they did with Ultron is that they filmed a whole bunch of these deaths of all these different superheroes so that when people tried to leak stuff, like, they couldn't leak out the right information. So Ooh, they went with gotcha. Quicksilver. And so, Ooh. like, Quicksilver, I wish he just would have stayed. I mean, it was definitely impactful, uh-huh. but I, I don't know. I liked him as a character. Yeah, so. I just thought it was, for that specifically, like you said, it was too soon, where, like, the only character really had an impact on was the sister. Yeah. Uh, and so we've got her around to deal with that, but that's another reason I hate Marvel is that they don't develop the emotions, or they don't let the actors develop their emotions with their scenes. They just give them lines, and they have to feed us the lines, and we're supposed to feel impacted by the words they say, but not by the way that they say them. Right. And I just hate Marvel movies that do that, which yes. is all of them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, of course. Uh... But yeah, if they had kept Quicksilver around and he had become like this fan favorite, and then they killed him, then that would have yeah, been a totally been different thing. It would have been more impactful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Christian Slater. <laughs> I mean, like, who else could you get as Ultron? So like, uh-huh. I don't oh know. My gosh, I should probably watch that movie. <laughs> um, my, going... I'm sorry. No, uh, I was gonna change the subject. If my my mom <laughs> watched Age of Ultron for a month straight. She put it on every single night. <laughs> my mom does this. She puts it. She puts it on every single night. And I remember by week two, like to week three, she was like, "I still haven't seen the movie yet." For like, eight months, my mom watched Age of Ultron. No, no, for a, Andrea McCall for a month. For oh, a, a month. month. Well, even then, right? Still for a month. For a month. Like it was probably even like two months because she like she was like, "Well, I have to cut down on this a little bit." But like, she put it on for a month and like she would fall asleep to it, right? Because it's like that's what put her to sleep, and I'm like. You sit down and watch it. Like, yeah. don't quit leaving the room and, like, you know. Doing other things. Watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a month. I hate people. And I have a friend who does this. It's not anybody you guys know. Um, but anytime I go to a theater movie with her, she at least checks her phone once. and During it. During the movie, yeah. And, like, she's got the, the brightness all the way down and she's not bothering anybody. But I just, I think to myself, how do you get yourself into a situation where you can't sit down for two, that's, three that's hours true. and not look at your phone? That's true. Especially when there's something in front of you that's supposed to be stimulating you. So stimulating. Like, yeah, and you're in a huge theater, and we were we were in Dunkirk, and she still <gasps> checked your phone like two or three times. During Dunkirk. And that movie's loud. It's Dunkirk. loud. <sighs> yeah. And I just don't understand how she wasn't just pulled into the movie. Right. It's just... Oh, well. <laughs> right. I, I will say, I kind of have a bad habit without just checking my phone in general, right? It's probably uh, because there was no women in it. Oh, there were women, but they were not in No, predominantly. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, right. my gosh. That's... <laughs> yeah. But there also weren't any, like, uh, black people. But That's historically, like... in 1940s uh, Europe, and it was a Dun- well, obviously Dunkirk. <laughs> like... Yeah. Like, obviously it makes sense, but people were still mad about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, it's what it's what it is. I suppose people are gonna say stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, it's weird because I I don't never I hear that about these kind of movies. My initial thing is to not even engage in that argument because I think it's just so boring to keep doing these World War Two movies. Yeah, like World I, War Two so overdone. It's so overdone. And what gets me about it is that you never gain anything new from it. Um, you, obviously, not, obviously no, the Nazis are the bad guys, yeah. right? <laughs> and it's so stupid if they're not, first of all. Yeah. Um, and so on that side note, I'm really just over any sort of discussion of what if the Nazis won, or what if you know the Confederacy won, for example. I, I, I looked at it like crap. I looked at it like that, but then now I'm just thinking more of like war stories and stuff, because like the they because like early 2000s with like Saving Private Ryan, they were just trying to depict it and try to get it as realistic as possible to get you to feel it, right? Yeah, true. And then when you get later on, when you get like Fury and Hacksaw Ridge, those are more like stories, and this is like what yeah, happened, yeah, they're, they're right? picking they're yes. picking a story in the context and they're telling that story. Yes, that's, yes, that's the only reason. So why good, was. those are good ideas. But yeah. that that's Dunkirk was World War Two movie though, right? It wasn't really no, it was uh, it was just a on... story about how they got these three hundred thousand uh, European soldiers off of the beach of Gun- Dunkirk. Kirk. Okay. Uh, During but the... like they, they projected to only get like thirty to forty five thousand, and they got three hundred thousand out. That's incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. Okay. Oh, wow. So that's sort of what it's about. Okay. Better, better yeah. than you know a lot of the stuff that I see. It's still the thing is it still has that sort of like engagement. Like when I think of a movie that tells a story about the in like, in the context, I think this person's living in Nazi Germany in like Munich, and their story involves the inner personalities of the people they know. And then they just have to deal with, the, you know, the context of being in a Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. Like, war movies are kind of always war movies, regardless of how you flip them, I feel. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I don't know, I, that maybe is a hard opinion. Because you think about, like, the, the movies that we watch and, like, we, we like, they're good or the ones on our side, but the, like, 
the very few are told on like Germany's side. The one that is like very well known is Valkyrie or Valkyrie with Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, uh, like watching that as a six year old and like, you know, like I was so, cause that was the most overhyped movies. Like, you know, planes dropping bombs, Tom Cruise with an eye patch, you know? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, just talking. What's the, uh, Tarantino movie? Oh, Inglorious Bastards. I swear to God, <laughs> those two movies came out at the same time and I saw the ads on TV and like, obviously one is a comedy and the other <laughs> one is a serious Nazi war. And I was like. Are these the same movie? <laughs> right. Like, because one is very, yeah. is like, oh, guys, to this day, I don't know which one's which. Mm-hmm. Um, it very much confuses me. Just think Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. I, that doesn't help me. Oh. Who, are, who are they? <laughs> Brad, Pitt is, <laughs> Brad Pitt is in three war movies. He's in Glorious Bastards, Fury, and then he was just in War Machine with uh, the Netflix special. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, yeah, technically four, because uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that was a war. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my! And you have to count World War Z. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> it's like a war. Oh, I still man. actually haven't seen World War Z. It's bad. I watched the yeah. South Park episode. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much got it. <laughs> um, uh, have you read the book? <laughs> no, I. There's a book. Bar and I own it. Oh, oh my boy. gosh! World War Z. I... Like that's. The book is really good. Like, really? Yeah, it's I, and that's why people were really excited for World War Z. Oh, okay. But pretty much the only thing that the, the movie and the book have in common is the the name. Like the uh, the movie totally shits on the name of the book. Is it kind of like the Purge, where like the everyone has that kind of idea of it, but for some reason the first movie was like a story within the context of the Purge? Yeah. So the way the World War Z the book is told is that it's a bunch of different stories. Oh, it's okay. like sort of an anthology of all these different sides of the zombie invasion. Uh, That's good. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And then the movie is, of course, just one. Yeah. And it's a boring one. Yes. Uh, yeah, because when you try to cram that much stuff into it, it gets yeah. Gets bad. Like people so. are saying, World War Z would work better as like a Netflix special. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Any. Well, first of all, it's an or anthology. HBO. Yeah. Why would why HBO, would, yeah. series and TV is just such a good medium? It, mm-hmm, I think right. it's honestly a much more perfect medium than movies. I love movies and the value, like the time limitations. I think it adds a lot of things, but people try to cram th- these things in like a lot of these superhero movies and everything i think that honestly one of the weakest things about these anthologies is that they're in movie form yeah because mm-hmm. they have to have a self-contained story each time and that really is a detriment because yeah. it has to have the same rise and fall climax climax that tv doesn't have mm-hmm. and i guess um we'll see because like, marvel's doing uh they've got like their movie thing but they're also doing like their netflix thing yes uh, yeah, yeah. and they've got the marvel defenders that just came out I haven't seen any of those Marvel shows. I haven't seen Daredevil, Jessica Jones, uh, Iron Fist, or whatever. Luke Cage. Yeah, Luke Cage. I didn't see any of them, so I don't know how well that's going to do, but that, I think, would be just be a better medium to do it through. I think yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can develop you, all the characters a lot more intensely. This is weird. I, I hear a lot of like higher critique of those movies, or those those things more than the the movies. Like The movies are always like, that was a good movie, period. But then whenever I hear about these shows, I always hear, like, really serious drama. Like, because, like, they can expand upon it. And you get, you mentioned yeah. this before, you get to see the emotions through acting because there's time. Because they actually have time mm-hmm. and different moments to, to show it. Character and, development yeah. is a lot more thorough. Yeah. Wait yeah. a minute. Daredevil. With the Daredevil movies, is that the, God, Ryan, is that Ryan, the... Uh, Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, is he no. in the movies? Or no, is no, he in the no. show? I think you're Deadpool. No, I'm thinking of Daredevil because he's also Daredevil. Oh. Uh, I, I think thought that was someone. I think that was someone I, else. I'm thinking Daredevil. of Green Lantern. That's Green what Lantern's what you're yes. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my bad. Wasn't I don't know who plays Daredevil on Netflix. I forgot who played. I I thought it was someone like pretty well known, but I did too. I don't know. I can't think. Wasn't of it. Jennifer Garner in that movie? I don't know. Was she, she was, a, she was as uh, <laughs> someone. I I I don't know. I was too young yeah. for that, so I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I hear great things about uh, the Netflix Daredevil. I hear great things about the Netflix Jessica Jones. I heard bad sense. things about the uh, Iron, Iron Fist. Fist. Uh, so. Luke Cage was... Luke Cage, I like Luke Cage. I, okay. I, I think I've heard that as well um, from other people. Okay. What I don't get is how Netflix keeps on putting out all these Netflix specials because they're not really special after a while if all of them are like... <laughs> well, I mean, none of us are. Netflix is just trying to turn into its own... Uh, Network. Yeah, its own like production, yeah. uh, Holly, big production Hollywood studio, where um, like you you have your movie made. What? How do you want to distribute it? Do you want to distribute it through Paramount? Do you want to distribute it through Amazon Video? Do you want to distribute it through Netflix? Yeah, right. you have all these options now. Uh, and I think Netflix has been like the the leading yeah. front to give that option. That's like obviously I look. Netflix is good because it stands outside of like the the production values of a lot of like mainstream things. You know, you see a lot of new interesting things. 
But with movies, I feel like that would be such a. I don't know how they would make money. How do you how well, do you add charges to go to see a movie? Isn't Netflix like a lot like super in debt right now? Because that's what I hear. Like they're oh like, I don't million, know they're millions of dollars in debt right now. I think now they're probably specials. Try, I think their goal is probably to invest and hopefully see returns. But I can see that because that's be, what I mean. That's what Bezos did with Amazon kind of because he just um, kept on putting the money back through the company. But yeah. I think that's what Netflix might be doing as well. Yeah, and it could have a possible yikes. I hope not. I mean, Netflix is great. So yeah, I I, I love Netflix. Um, it's like I don't have HBO. That's that's how Netflix is how I get my TV. Basically. I I well, I have Netflix and HBO. Like, uh-huh. cause I still haven't seen uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Me neither. And <laughs> I have H- I have HBO too. Like that's the worst. There's part. no excuse. And so um, there's no excuse for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So I don't know. I'm right now. I kind of like HBO where it's at right now because it's shifting into a Netflix like structure because they're also coming out with hbo productions Mm -hmm. yeah and they have like their their comedy stuff with i know they had tj miller and then they just came out with a documentary series called the defiant ones with like dr dre eminem yeah snoop yes the only thing about hbo is that it almost self-insists upon adult content in a way of like it's why i think that getting like a pg-13 rating or even like a pg rating on some things is almost a strength as a limitation because you're not forced to make low brow you know you know everyone gets to enjoy the boobs and sex and everything because mm-hmm. like one thing in game of thrones is that in the books you'll have all this all these scenes that are very dialogue based and the dialogue's always there in the scene but also in the show the scene will have naked women making out in the background for no reason other than dressing and you'll have shows like girls or uh pretty anything you're gonna get a lot yeah. of dong and a lot of <laughs> boobs and it, it I don't know if it really serves a purpose other than hey we're on this network so we gotta have it yeah and it's yeah. just it's comfortable did you hear that um The Walking Dead like all like the producers of that show are suing AMC uh for just like cutting uh, undercutting them on like the the amount they're paying them and undercutting them on like their rights as uh producers and stuff so there's like this huge lawsuit right now and if these producers end up winning they could move the show over to HBO where like it'd be a lot more violent and they'd actually be able to portray what's happening in the comics on the show I mean that if you want to stick to the comics and want to stick to what's true then yeah go for it because like that seems definitely viable but also HBO is a paid like because AMC is broadcasted yeah it's, yeah. Stuff. yeah it's cable TV so I guess you would lose you would lose a lot of mm-hmm. viewership right but at the same time you're still making the revenue exactly HBO would make so much money well, they make a lot of money, and also I don't even know if they'd lose viewership because yeah, Walking Dead's the most watched show on cable, but Game of Thrones is the most watched show ever. So you have all those people still watching yeah. HBO, still have HBO yeah. subscriptions. I feel like The Walking Dead would pull just as big of an audience. That, as oh, that, makes, that makes sense. I would worry about the artistic integrity because it's so far into the show already that all of a sudden right. you have a very change in production value. Yeah. Well, the idea was that maybe they would uh, not reboot it, but it's just sort of like. End the AMC show with, like, maybe Rick dies or something. And then that's where that... The, like, conclu- they conclude the AMC show, and then they pick up where yeah. that left's off, leaves off. In, like, a second series. In, like, a second series. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I was thinking, like, Rick and Morty. They should do that. Like, <laughs> put that over to HBO. And then I had Rick in my head, and then you said they should kill Rick. I'm like, no, they shouldn't. What more could they add on Rick and Morty that is already there? <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Morty? No, that's... You guys excited for the new episode tonight? I am. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that I show. love so Rick much. and Morty. It's so good. It's so... It's too we, good. We were just getting into a deep conversation about Rick and Morty. And, like, I remember when Austin first showed me it about two years ago, um... I was like, there's, like, you know, it's just straight up funny. There can't be anything else to it, really. He burps every second. Like, yeah, because didn't Adult Swim tell him? I, I heard that Adult Swim had to tell them, like, Rick has to stop burping. Because, like, that's <laughs> a little annoying. Yeah, no, the first, the, uh, the pilot episode is certainly, like, different. That's, like, the yeah. best pilot episode probably ever. Yeah, I love that. Is. Like, it's there's no really better way pilot. to set the stage than that. So, mm-hmm. I, yeah. It's really good. Uh, well, we have about 30 seconds left. Um, you guys want to add anything else? We talked about movies pretty much the entire time. Which is a great topic. I yeah, love it. It's great. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we're good. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. We ended up going a little shorter this time because people were telling me that it was too long, and so hopefully cutting it back about fifteen minutes. Uh, audience demand was overwhelming. Audience demand was <laughs> overwhelming. Like all those. 50 people that watched the first one <laughs> that's a lot more than i expected yeah hopefully yeah. this one is, does a little better uh because it's short anyway uh thank you for watching um i don't know we'll see you next month hopefully hopefully yeah. bye <laughs>